what we're going to be talking about now is actin uh, filament formation and how that is regulated. So actin filaments, remember we talked about before, or we've discussed before in lecture, is that through spontaneous formation, it takes at least three G-actins with ATP to crash into each other in order to start nucleation, which is where we have addition on both ends, the plus and minus end of a filament as it's forming. And then eventually we reach steady state where we have an established filament and we see the treadmilling effect. So we have addition at the plus end and subtraction of G-actins on the minus end. Well now we're going to see that in some cases actin filament formation is regulated. So when G-actins actually get activated with ATP, which is done by a certain protein which we'll look at, then how that protein or how that G-actin once activated with ATP will then get regulated, so kind of held off temporarily and then allowed to go onto an actin filament to the plus end. And then how at the minus end of an actin filament where we have ADP actin, how those G actins get recycled. So let's take a look at this process then now in detail. So there's three main proteins that we're going to be talking about that help in regulating the formation of an actin filament. The first one that we're going to look at is called profilin. So profilin is responsible for binding to a G-actin monomer and adding ATP onto this G-actin. So when ATP is attached to the G-actin now, now this G-actin with ATP has the ability to go ahead now and bind to the plus end of an existing or pre-existing actin filament. But again, this is regulated because we, this is not going to be spontaneous. So, a way to regulate that and prevent spontaneous formation or addition, in this case of a G-actin, to the plus end of the filament, we have another protein called thymosin beta-4. Thymosin beta-4 will bind to G-actins that have an ATP bound to them and basically just temporarily sequesters or holds on to that G-actin and then will regulate when that G-actin with ATP can go ahead and bind to the plus end. So I discussed this in the live review session on Monday, but I basically compared this to getting into a club or bar. So what do you mean getting into a club or bar? How does that relate? Well, let me tell you. So your G-actins are trying to get into this club, which in the, the club in this case is your pre-existing actin filament, where all the action is happening. Now, the G-actin needs to get dressed up for the club, so profilin helps dress up the G-actin by adding ATP to it. So now when the G-actin is ready to go and is all dressed up with the ATP, it makes its way to the club, the pre-existing actin filament. Now in order to enter or get onto the pre-existing filament, you have to go and enter and be added to the plus end. But before that, you always come across the bouncer, right? The security. That's thymosin beta-4. Thymosin beta-4 is your bouncer. He's going to check to see, A, do you, are you dressed appropriately? So do you have ATP? You're like, yes, I do have ATP. But then the thymosin beta-4 will regulate when you can go in, or when, in this case, when you can go onto the plus end. Because remember this whole treadmilling effect. So if there's too many actin filaments already at the plus end, then there's going to be a queue over here with thymosin beta-4 of G-actin monomers. But now what happens is that there's another protein which also acts as a security, and that's called cofilin. Now cofilin is a protein that's going to go ahead and look at the minus end of the existing actin filament, and it's going towards the minus end, which remember is composed of ADP G-actin. So cofilin goes towards the segment of the filament that is full of mostly ADP G-actins and will literally snap off 
this short segment towards the minus end and break down this actin filament that is chock full of ADPG actin and break them back down into individual monomers which can then get recycled and interact with profilin. So when cofilin, so now let's use the analogy again. So in the clubs, people tend to get a little out of control, a little too drunk, a little too crazy. It's time for their night to end. So cofilin is going to go to the back end here of our club, so our pre-existing actin filament, and it looks towards the minus end, which is full of ADP actin, and ADP actin are the ones that are partied out or too drunk to carry on, so cofilin removes that end. This then frees up room and makes room now for addition at the plus end. So the G-actins that are still fresh and got dressed with ATP that thymosin beta-4 was regulating can now get added to the plus end. So before you can enter, you have to lose some of the customers. Right? So again, the G-actins get activated or dressed up with ATP thanks to profilin. Then they go and meet up with thymosin beta-4, which makes sure that there's enough room for them to be added. Then they will go ahead and get added to the plus end. And at the plus end, you have actins with ATP. And then over time, that actin, the ATP on the actins, will get hydrolyzed to ADP plus PI. And then, of course, towards the end of this existing filament, you have actins with ADP only. And now these actins with ADP are subject to being chopped off and falling off and the job of that is cofilin. So cofilin goes towards the minus end, looks for the ADP actins, snaps off that segment, and breaks off the filament back into the G actins. So this is a cyclic process with three important proteins, profilin, cofilin, and thymosin beta-4. And again, so this is how actin filament formation or polymerization gets regulated.